and then Jason Kelsey <laughs> taking a guy's phone and just smashing it, which I thought was hilarious. <laughs> Sometimes people take things too far and think that they can talk to these athletes like they're not real people. Right. And these athletes have the right mm -hmm. to come back at them. Rundown Monday, November 4th. We got Eddie. We got Max. Sam's behind the sticks. I'm Stephen Che. Um, we are presented by High Noon. Here's the tea about High Noon's all-new vodka iced tea. It's made with real vodka, real iced tea, and no added sugar, no carbonation. Uh, if you're in the, a hard tea lover who has done this, done with salt, sugary, malt-based teas, you're gonna love High Noon vodka iced tea. With 90 calories, High Noon vodka iced tea is great for any occasion under the sun and comes in four delicious flavors. You gotta try original peach is my personal favorite, uh, lemon and raspberry. Uh, raspberry. Visit highnoonspirits.com to find a pack near you. Big day. In the National Football League, Max, congrats on uh, being the Jaguars at home. Great win for you guys. Wins uh, a win. <laughs> Wins uh, a win. Let's start with the game that was on our main TV. Um, it was on our main TV because obviously um, Chicago, a lot of you guys here, but Hank also had a <laughs> potential thirty thousand dollar bet. Uh, it was a seven leg parlay that included a Mac Matt Collins, Collins touchdown. touchdown and somebody else very obscure. Yeah. Um, and he needed Marvin Harrison Jr., which was probably his easiest leg of the parlay to hit. Uh, did not in a very frustrating game. But Eddie, the Bears are struggling. DJ Moore walking off the field mid-play. Yeah, it was a disaster top to bottom. Just a disaster of a game. Uh, There's like 22 seconds left in the half. And, like, the Bears were ready to pack it in. But, like, all right, we're just – this is a formality. And then the, the Cardinals were like, fuck you. And they scored. And it was over since then. So, uh, brutal game. Starts from the top. Our coach stinks. And the whole team played like shit, so it was bad. Are we officially done with Flus? I've, I've been done. Been done? Yeah, like I had a... You want everybody gone? From the coaching staff? Yeah. Yeah, you got to clean the whole thing out. It's not... Coaching staffs really aren't transferable. Is Poles okay? Does Ryan, GM Ryan Poles survive this? I mean, I think so, but it's a big blemish on his record for that he kept him this year for sure. Because you get into a very dangerous game if you fire your coach and GM and you just drafted a quarterback. Totally. But that's why they should have taken care of the problem before this year. And they didn't. What about DJ Moore? Because this is now yeah. – this is not an isolated incident of him not showing the best body language towards Caleb Williams. Okay. So, yes, that play looks really bad on the surface. I still would like to reserve judgment until we know what happened. Did he get hurt? I don't know. They said people were saying he might have gotten hurt at that moment, but it, it looks bad. It does. I you, mean, you, even you, if you're on the field, you're occupying. Def like there are two defenders that are on him. You at least could just stand there, and he's fine. It's kind of a wild move that just completely. Sure, I, I'm not saying it's not. And you're right. There has been bad body language moments before, and we had Cole in here two weeks ago, and we talked about it. And he's like, "That's just who DJ is. Even if we're winning or we're losing, <laughs> he's, he's just a, an asshole." No, no, no. He like even <laughs> if we're winning or losing, he's just the guy who's gonna go sit on the bench by himself and like do his own thing. And guys are like that. There was also sure. the Tyson Badgett clip where it looked like he went over to him and said, "We need you out here." Listen, I'm not saying. I just want to. It, it feels like a situation where if there's smoke, there's fire, and it. it I feel. It, that can't be good for... If I had my metal detector out, I'm not saying that there would be no beeps of concern. Like, there are beeps. I just don't know if they're, you know, fire alarm beeps. Rookie quarterback, okay. number one overall pick, especially, where are the Bears uh, four or five now? So, they have a buyout? Four no, and four. Right? Four and four, okay. Yeah. All right, so eight games in? We're dead. <laughs> I mean, we're You have your dead. whole division slate, so, like, you could string together a few wins, and that could matter, but obviously a most Steve, of the division cooked. is better. We, we would have to win – we would have to win – if we want to go six and three, we still have ten wins, and I don't think that gets you in the NFC. We're cooked. Ten wins will get you in the it's NFC. It's a week-to-week league. It's a week-to-week -week league. I don't think ten wins gets you in in the NFC, do you? I, th I think it does. I think it does. I don't know. You, it depends. Eagles it, are seven and two? But Eagles are six and two. I, the only difference is – your, the bear schedule coming up is su such a gauntlet. Brutal. So it's like, like, yeah. You can flip a switch, but I, I don't know. You got I, the Pats. You got six divisional games: the Seahawks and the Niners. 
Yeah, that's tough because like right now the Bucks are sitting at four and four. They're lined up to play the Chiefs tonight, which is certainly a tall task. But even if we lose this game, we're far from dead. We got two against the Panthers. We're playing the Saints. Yeah. We're playing the Raiders. We're playing the Giants. We have a soft Every, schedule to end these. The seasons. NFL just isn't good this year. Every team has a soft <laughs> schedule. Like I, you go around everywhere, and it's like, who have you beaten? And everyone has the same answer. It's like, oh yeah, they have a lot of wins. But they have a bunch of wins against two win teams because everyone in the NFL sure. is a two win team. You beat the Panthers. Yeah, you beat the Saints. <laughs> Panthers two win team now. Congrats yeah. to them. Um, the Saint that kind of going hand in hand with that. The Saints fired Dennis Allen this morning after so many Saints players took to social media to voice their displeasure with everything. Chris and- Olave getting another concussion. Cam Jordan tweeting after the Cam Jordan, by the way, zero sacks last six in games. Why don't you shut up, dude? Uh, <laughs> Michael Thomas during the game, former Saint, just saying how much Derek Carr sucks. Uh, Max, what are your thoughts on the Saints cleaning house? The Saints are I- I- interesting. They started off the year 2-0. and They were they played, good in that Philly yeah, game. Yeah, and they, do- they should have won that Philly game yeah. easily. We got pretty lucky on, on the blown, on blown yeah. coverage on the Goddard play. Eagles ended up winning, and then it's just been an absolute dumpster fire. The the players go, going to Twitter, I, I feel like I've never seen that. Yeah. Like, you you have press conferences after the game. Why wouldn't you just voice your displeasure there? Why did everyone collectively agree to just go to Twitter and talk about what's going on? And then it was all right after what Michael Thomas was doing, which was one of the weirdest things I, I've ever seen from a former player, yeah. going around to fans in the city and asking – what do you think about Derek Carr? And be like, yeah, yeah, he sucks. He sucks. Tell me about Derek Carr, man. I don't like that shit. You don't like him? I don't like him, man. What's wrong with him? He doesn't know how to play. He just always keep the ball like this. Like this man, that's crazy. You know that. Yeah. I don't know. That was one of the weirder things. And then obviously Dennis Allen deserved to be fired this morning. He, he doesn't get talked about for the biggest fall from grace ever. The NFL does the top 100 every year. I think it was 2019. He he was number one. Cam Jordan? No. Oh. Michael Thomas. Oh. Number oh. one I best think, player. I you were talking about Dennis Allen. No. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, a lot of crossing lines. Michael Thomas, there. number one best player yeah. in the league. Now unemployed, tweeting during games about how much his former quarterback sucks is an unbelievable fall from grace in under five years. He's a target machine. He got hurt a bunch, too. But I'm I mean, happy he lied for about that. a lot of surgeries and stuff like that, but yeah. Did he? Yeah, he just, like, didn't take team advice, got his own, did his own shit. Oh, like, shit. a lot of that's know. on him. Uh, I'm happy for the Saints, though. It's nice that you guys could fire coaches midseason. That would be... That'd be <laughs> I like that that's your takeaway here. Yeah, I'm sorry to bring it back to me, but that, that would be sick. If you were to fire Flus, who do you want calling plays? Or who do you want at the head of the ship? You want Shane Waldron, who no, like, is no, probably no. the biggest problem? No, no, no. you got to hire the special teams high tower. You just let him take care of – give him the keys for the last nine games and go from there. Keep my guy Ryan Griffin on, quarterback coach. First year. Guy. He, Why <laughs> Caleb, Caleb's going to be fun. Uh, let's talk about Max, your city, Philly. What a weird weekend for Philly. So, first we have non-football related. This was the first one to come out Saturday. Joel Embiid punching, later deleted – shoving a reporter in the locker room based on a, a story that he wrote, which he mentioned Embiid's dead brother and son in in relation to his effort and in, in like willingness to come back. And then Jason Kelsey <laughs> taking a guy's phone and just smashing it, which I thought was hilarious. <laughs> Very, very weird weekend. I'm not even going to lump Penn State with James Franklin. So we'll talk about that later. But what's going on with Philly athletes in general? Saquon also maybe the play of a lifetime. We'll, I, we'll get to the Saquon play later. Uh, those two incidents, it's insane that they both happened within 24-hour <laughs> period. Like like 12 hours. And they were, and it's both like the two faces of, of like Philadelphia sports. Like yeah. Joel, you could argue 1A, 1B. Joel yeah. and B, Jason Kelsey, like – you think of Philly athletes, even though Kelsey is retired, you think of those two guys yeah. and like very aggressive, aggressive, <laughs> yeah. aggressive moments I, towards fans. And but most most people are on both of their sides of that. Like sometimes there are, are fa- a fan and a reporter. Yeah. Sometimes people 
take things too far and think that they can talk to these athletes like they're not real people. Right. And these athletes have the right Mm -hmm. to come back at them. Like, they are still humans, and you're still having human-to-human interaction. And these people have the right to be like, fuck you. You can't say this about me just because, like, I am this celebrity in your eyes that you think that you can write or say whatever you want in front of me. So right. I'm all, obviously I'm on both of their sides. I think it's bullshit. What Marcus Hayes wrote about Joel Embiid, absolutely insane to compare his leg, his leg, Joel Embiid's legacy, disappointing the like Joel Embiid's disappointment of his legacy and compare that to the death of his little brother. Like how yeah. does that happen? Yeah. Yeah, it was, a, it was a tough scene. Eddie, what are your thoughts on uh, all of these matters? Do you agree with damage of property, Max? I don't. I don't. I don't know what you're. Do I agree with what? <laughs> da- damage of property. Damage of property. Yeah. I mean, yeah, that guy just. It was better than that than punching him in the face. No, I know. I was gonna troll, but I can't. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm like, I'm so on Kelsey's side. People are just too comfortable. Yeah. People are just way too comfortable with, with just trying to get the clip or trying to get the fucking YouTube prank or whatever. People are just. Idiots way too comfortable, and uh, I think the blog is weirder. Like because the Kelsey thing, it's like, all right, that guy's liquored up. He's trying to, you know, get some type of reaction, which he got in the demise of his phone. But the article is like, someone also probably read that and was like, yeah, yeah, that's good for sure. It was it was a Philly Inquirer article. Like that was a Philly Inquirer. Oh my god! So it's like these things went through multiple channels and that's also like the Philly media is insane. Like obviously I guess And this was a day after he was like, I've done way too much this fucking city to be talked about this right. or something of that. No, nature. no, no, no. The article was written before the season. But like Oh it was refer the guy he was talking about that article ah, okay, dur- okay. when he said I've done way too much for this city and that this was the first time that they that they Saw each other oh, face. So he, to face. he's been having us oh. in the chamber for yes, 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 weeks. Right. Okay. Interesting. I mean, I guess we can put the like the actual blurb of the article, but he, I mean, he essentially said that Joel Embiid wants to be good for his son, who he named after his brother who died, yeah. and like, and then immediately was like, well, he wants to be good for his son and his brother. Well, he actually sucks because he never <laughs> yeah. plays. And it was like, how can you? You can say like the. Uh, availability, blah blah blah. But why do you have to relate that to his son and his dead brother? Right, exactly. Like, yeah. He almost quit basketball when his brother died because yeah. he was in the states and his brother died in a car accident in Cameroon, and it like really, really affected him mentally. Sure. And it was like, how are you going? Like, why do you need to bring something like that up? Because he's not playing back to back October <laughs> basketball. Like whatever yeah. that. I mean, we're no strangers to this. We got the Brandon Walker Devlin push. You uh, almost yep, destroyed dude's yep, phone yep, yep. a couple weeks ago. <laughs> I have a couple incidents now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, it's I mean, after seeing both like the context of both these, I think you know, even as a guy who's not a fan of Philly sports teams, like it's hard to not side with both Jason Kelsey and Embiid uh, on these matters. Uh, the Cowboys, another dumpster fire, uh, getting smoked by the Falcons. CD Lamb potentially injured in that with an AC joint thing. Uh, Dak saying we fucking suck. <laughs> Listen, we're in the cave every Sunday, and Max, I know you could agree, and Stephen, you do agree, but you don't talk as <laughs> as filthy as Max and I. But sometimes there's nothing better than dropping a we fucking suck. You know, <laughs> I don't. I hate Dak Prescott for a lot of reasons. I don't blame him for saying that at all, at all. Yeah. nor do I think like Cowboys fans should because I'm sure every single Cowboys fans were saying the same thing at that yeah. moment. And it's like sometimes you, sh- you say shit in the middle of a game when you're watching it and it's like you don't really mean it, but that's what you're feeling at that moment. Like the amount of times that I've like seen Jalen Hurts, you know, hold on to a ball for too long and like take a sack or make it intercept or throw a bad interception. I'm like, this guy fucking sucks. I don't actually believe it. But in the moment, I'm going to say that because I'm pissed off of what I'm watching. And that's all that he was doing. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. I mean, the Cowboys are in a tailspin. Uh, Zeke Elliott getting not suspended, but not traveling with the team because missing meetings, late for meetings. They're just, I mean, they couldn't run the ball to begin with, but they're just on an ultimate downward spiral spiral. Um, the rest of the NFL, I don't think there's a ton to talk about. I mean, Lamar is incredible, obviously. The the commander's up to 7-2, and two, which is unreal. we got Drake May versus Caleb next week, which will be 
Um, honestly, probably a pretty boring, boring game if I'm if I'm just being real with it. Real uh, quick though, the Saquon back. The Saquon, that we didn't, was we didn't. In uh, and I'll talk about it because I did say Saquon was going to be a, a fantasy bust this year, which was obviously a horrible take, <laughs> and terrible. My other take was that Marvin Harrison Jr. wouldn't be a top fifteen wide receiver, and I was correct on that. But yes, it was horrible, horrible take. Um, he's been healthy and he's been incredible. This play for a guy who I refer to as a Twitter running back because he does have like amazing highlights. This probably is number one and he's had one where he you know threw up the peace sign at like the 50 yard line and been gone i feel like this is one of the greatest highlights plays from running back ever the the part of this play that is so amazing is that he does the the reverse hurdle but right before it he has like one of the best spin moves of the of the year yeah and no one will ever talk about it yeah like this guy's him dead to rights and he yeah. just fucking jukes him out of his shoes yes and, I mean, he is probably – he's got to be one of the top two most like most gifted athletes in the NFL right now of, like, just pure yeah. strength and athleticism. And pretty pretty he's, sick. He's, I mean, this is kind of what we waited for when he got drafted two overall. And yeah. He's, like, really shining. I think also think it shows a lot about the Giants of, like – Yeah. He's in his, what, his age 28, 29 season right now mm -hmm. as a running back. That's, like – I think he's a little it. younger. He's like I think 26, he's, 27? No, he's a, He was 2018, so 6 years, oh, maybe. I think I think he, if I had to guess, I would say 28. He's 27. 27. 27. Okay. okay. He'll be 28. 28. February, oh yeah, he'll be 28 more. in February. So he's close to close to being in his 28 season, which is not That's an old for a running. That's back. old for a running back and he's by far showing like his highest potential this year and I think that has a lot to say with the New York Giants more than it does the Philadelphia Eagles, but he had a great rookie season. He had like 200, 2000 all purpose years. But since then, like he has not met expectations. This is, this is what we, you're right. Expected to see when he got drafted to overall. So hopefully he can keep it rolling. Um, let's touch on college football. <laughs> Another, I'm not going to necessarily associate them with Philly cause it's a little far away from them, but Penn state loses to Ohio state. James Franklin going at a fan after the game. What do you think about this? I mean, the, the fan kind of, I couldn't really decipher what he said. Um, uh, the It was first and goal from the three to tie the game up late in the fourth, and I think they ran it three times. And uh, and then they threw it. It was like a horrible pass. Call whatever. Call Triple coverage. No, he ke he he was pointing at three three, so I think that he was talking about the three plays. Okay. From within within inside the three, because that's what also most Penn State fans were upset about. Um, again, I also don't have any problem with what James Franklin said. Like, I mean, he, going all he, fan is a, but like all he said is, what, "What's your 19? name?" Yeah, what's your name? Like well, it's not like yeah, but as a 19 year old, you want like one of the most powerful guys on campus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. for the wrong reasons, probably not an ideal situation. Yeah, I don't. I mean, I I kind of think it's like uh, James Franklin's pissed off like this. Yes, yeah, this see, kid also just an outrage. Oh yeah, outfit. what a fit. <laughs> <laughs> so the, yeah, that's why I think he's talking because he, he keeps putting up the the three number. I I don't know. I th I think that most of Penn State is very upset with James Franklin right now. Eight he, straight losses to Ohio State, I believe. Yeah, I think he's zero and six, or he's like one and ten against Ohio State in his tenure there, and then like three and sixteen against top ten teams. Like, curious though, is there any solace in the fact though that he does still have a chance? In typical years, if this was years prior, the season's over. There, you're getting a bowl game, and that's the season. They're going to make the playoff. Yeah, he and, does have a chance of redemption here, and that's what this new playoff format has changed for Penn State. Is that if you look at Penn, if you look at James Franklin's tenure at Penn State, like his playoff percentage would be like among the tops in the country if it was a twelve team oh, yeah. playoff every year mm -hmm. because every single year they're in that eight to twelve. They're, in, the mix, they're yeah. in that eight to twelve range. That's like you just have to look at different programs around college football and be like, for ninety five percent of college programs, like that is an ideal situation for your coach to be in. Like. You yep. want to be in the mix. You want to have a chance to to go in and have these big games. But Penn State high, holds himself to a higher standard. They have a lot of history there. And fans are upset. But 
this is a different year because right now it would be like, all right, Penn State season's over. You're not going to make it. You are going to have a shot to have a big win, hopefully at home in the first round of the college football playoff, which yeah. if he can do that, it pretty much will right the wrong of this game. So that's just like the difference of college football this year. Yeah, for sure. This isn't the first time he's done it, though. There's been other times where he's gone at fans, which if I'm being honest, I don't hate. Like, if you're a fan and you're going to, like, talk shit to a guy who's in his most – like, they put everything into this. If you're going to talk shit to a guy who's in his most down right after a loss, back – I'm not saying, like, fist fight him, but, like, have the balls to, like, have a have an argument with him. I think that's totally fine. Yeah, and I don't think that – Don't hide behind the fucking railing. It all, it all really depends on, like, context and, like, what you're – like, I didn't necessarily love the – Nick Sirianni a couple weeks ago when he like had barely squeaked by the Browns and like kind of ran towards the state like the the sidelines after he had like squeaked out a win against the Browns kind of like look at me look at me but I have less issue with James Franklin just kind of responding to a guy that's right in his face and just being like yes what's your name if you're gonna like talk this shit like put your name behind it and I, I also have no problem with the kid just running away, being like, uh, I don't uh, <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I, I, just like 19, yeah. I didn't, mean, I didn't mean to get myself in this situation yeah. here, but. Maybe he just wanted his name to address him by his name and have a conversation. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So you don't really know exactly what was going on. It's like, okay, um, Phil, let me tell you why we ran it three times, Phil. Yeah. Like, you know. I think, if I was a fan, like, I had a problem with uh, the Bucks last week, Liam Cohen. They had uh, against the Falcons, big game. They were running five yards a clip in the first half. They had two runs in the second half. If I was right next to the tunnel where he was leaving, and I would be like, why the fuck did you only run it two times? I would love for him to answer that question to my feet. That's exactly what I'm looking for when I yeah. do that. I don't know why you would well, do you, that to get a reaction and then just bounce. But I also uh, think that's you, you're a little bit different of a fan of, like, you would, you would like to, like, sit down and have a, have a yeah. coffee and, like, actually go through the X's and O's. I think most fans just want to <laughs> What are we doing? They're in too high. <laughs> Fucking run. It's a light box. <laughs> Five yards a clip. Um, all right, let's talk about factor. Uh, factor back, Merrill Hodge. Notice how the days are shorter, but your to-dos aren't. Power through a day with factors, no prep, no mess meals. From breakfast to dinner, anything you want in between, factor has easy, nutritious op- options for you to be fueled and keep you feeling your best. Whether you like your routine or enjoy mixing things up, Factor has you covered with 35 different delicious meals every week and over 60 additional convenient options. You can add to your box like keto cookies, press, juices, and smoothies. Don't let shorter days slow you down. Stay energized with America's number one ready-to-eat meal delivery service. Factor lets you do you. Choose from six menu preferences to help you manage calories, maximize protein intake, avoid meat, or simply eat well-balanced. Head on over to factormeals.com slash rundown50. One word, rundown50. And use code rundown50 to get 50% off your first box and 20% off your next month. That's code rundown50 at factormeals.com slash rundown50 to get 50% off your first box plus 20% off your next month while your subscription is active. Uh, Something that some people could have some food allergies to, peanuts. Let's talk about peanut the squirrel. (laughs) This is a crazy story. Is it real? I think it has to be real. It's a it's a guy who had a TikTok account for a squirrel. So he rescued a squirrel that I guess was injured out in the wild and nursed it back to health in his apartment. And the squirrel, I guess, was thriving. The squirrel's name is Peanut. And somebody reported it that I guess knew where he lived or whatever. Reported it. And the squirrel was taken by authorities and euthanized. This is an all-time crazy story, assuming this is true, which we are <laughs> believing at face value right now. I think it has to be. It's like AP News is, is put out this article here. I don't think this is like just like some This is the Twitter's. AP, the Associated yeah. Press? Right? Yeah. Yes. All right. I know it's real, but they it, it really euthanized it? Like it didn't just die in like transportation, transport? Like, you know, like Squirrels don't die easy. Yeah, that's true. I still don't understand the like. It, 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 I guess it's illegal to, to yeah, a lot of have animals this, that have this squirrel as a pet. Is that like a? I mean, what are we doing? It's tonight's Monday Night Football. There's going to be a vignette during the game of Carson Steele's alligator yeah. in his house, and we're worried about a squirrel. What is what is that squirrel going to do to anybody? Nothing. There's a million squirrels everywhere. 
just because this one guy has a squirrel in his house. Yeah, but where's the line, Max? First it's a squirrel, <laughs> then it's a raccoon, then it's a fox. Well, there was then a raccoon a also. Wolf. There was also oh, there was a raccoon there was, yeah. in, this, was, in this guy's uh, house. Fred, Fred the raccoon. And it's a wolf. Where's the line, Max? Yeah, and then it attacks listen. a kid, and then they throw the GoFundMe out there. And that where, where's the line, Max? But the, but the squirrel, but the squirrels and the raccoons are already there. I guess you you will euthanize a raccoon if there's yeah you can't if, have if that. there's like an infestation in like a neighborhood. But there's squirrels everywhere. You're not euthanizing just random squirrels that are going across your your front lawn. Do you ever get spooked with the squirrels at Hofstra? They go right, right up to your feet. They're, they're going right within a feet. foot of your yeah. body, and that is actually terrifying. Hofstra squirrels, yeah. I had that observation the other day, how it's crazy that we're not as afraid of squirrels as we should be. Like, if I see a rat, I'm like, you know, I'll that, avoid that thing like the plague. But squirrels, like, all right, there he is. Like, one of the grossest things point, I've right? ever had to do as an adult was uh, when we lived in Jersey, they, we had the power lines, and... Um, a squirrel fell off the power line and just died in my driveway. <laughs> and so I had to like shovel it into a garbage bag. It was so disgusting. It was like fully intact, but it was just, it just looked like it was asleep. I'll one up you on that. Ugh. I hate to be that guy, but I got to one Hit up me. you. I had a guy across the street and he would walk by and say hello so casually and he'd pick up the dead squirrels with his bare hands and Ugh. throw them in the garbage. And he would think nothing of it. How many times has this happened? Have you had a lot of dead squirrels by you? At least multiple, yeah. At least two. <laughs> I feel like there's got to be some sort of disease by by just raw dogging. Yeah, that bushy dead, tail. Yeah, a dead. You'd think. See, that's Max. what I that's what I don't get. Like rat rats, you just think like, oh yeah, disease. Yeah, if you go too yeah. close, and then the, although I mean, I don't think that's normal either to just pick up a fucking dead squirrel. No, I, I agree. It was like, hey, what's up, Eddie? Nick's doing well. He's in the house. If you want me to go call, I'm like, dude, you have a fucking tail. You have a squirrel by the bushy tail. I don't want to talk to you. I was. I was at a wedding this week, and I was taking an Uber to the airport with a buddy of mine who's a doctor, and he like experiment. He like does experiments on animals for like medical purposes, uh, and he works with like some type of like monkey and rat. And he, was, I was like, oh, you have to get like suited up. He's like, oh yeah. He's like, you got to wear like full suits and whatever. He's like, because if you get like bit or get some type of disease from a monkey, he's like, there's not cures for most of those. So he's like, you're probably gonna die. Mm -hmm. Which yeah, is just insane to think about. It is. Yeah. It is. Don't pick up squirrels with your bare hands. Um, anything post show we got? Big cat's got kidney stones, which is just the absolute worst. It's for crazy. Him. He's. Had, I mean, this isn't his, his first rodeo with kidney stones, but I. How many has he had before? I don't. I think this is second or third time. I just know that he, when he initially told us, he was like. Uh, PFT, like it's happening again. So I was like, oh, all right, geez. yeah, like I know that. You guys remember uh, Tanya from the real world, Walla Walla, Washington? Yeah. She's got kidney stones. Right now? Well, she, I mean, she always said that was like her storyline on the show. <laughs> I, can't, I can't say I'm familiar with the program. That's, no, you, you know what I'm talking about. So you think kidney stones? You think a Tanya, crazy Tanya from oh, the challenge? Yeah. yeah, that's, I don't know what else you would think about her for. <laughs> Being like a wild drunk girl? Like, I was Tanya. Like, stones. You saw it, and then they showed it in the toilet. It was crazy. I didn't watch her real world. It was actually, oh, well, she was in the Chicago yeah. season. I watched on the challenge after. Okay. So, yeah. I, I still don't necessarily understand what kidney stones are. Do you literally piss like out? Calcium deposits, I think. But do you piss mm -hmm. out like a like a, a hard substance? Yes. Oh, yeah. You piss out a rock. You see a rock come out of your, uh, oh. your penis. So, right? oh. <laughs> yeah. So, like, there's, like, uh, like, as you're pissing that out, is there, like, a, like a lump going... Go like going yeah. out. Oh my god! You know how like if you like mix like Gatorade or like an electrolyte thing, and like some like stuff gets stuck on the bottom, and it just like hardens. That's yeah. kind of what it is like. Oh you, gotta, you know what's uh, crazy is like through. Big Cat. Remember that Lane Kiffin? Uh, no, it was Hugh Freeze the, when he was in the hospital yeah. bed coaching. Yeah. Like yeah, yeah, there was no way that guy was missing NFL Sunday. <laughs> like, oh no! You're just gonna turn around and you see Max memes and fucking Shane just wheeling this guy around. I mean, he had a pugs gallon carrying of water next to him. Yeah. I was like, what are you doing? Yeah, pugs carrying the water, like, the water bag, <laughs> the IV bag, and like you're just wheeling him in to do part of my take. Big cats on missing Sunday. Yeah. Oh no. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right. Fun rundown. Uh, thanks to Max. Thanks to Eddie. Stephen Che. We got Sam on the sticks. Bucks. Let's shock the world tonight. See you guys. Oh.